Hello everyone, I see that everyone is already focused and it is great that we had some coffee, that we are smiling and we are glad to welcome everyone here in this room at the International Healthcare Summit which uh, was uh, established by Chance Corporation and August Mission and also supported by uh, Kiev administration. And using this opportunity, let me express gratitude to the sponsors of this event, AMR, Jagger, and School of Public Health. Thank you so, so much. And uh, also I would like to express gratitude for uh, the information support of uh, this event, uh, the також сказати декілька слів про платформу, власне, із перших днів повномасштабної війни, яку Росія розв'язала проти України. Команда доктор Сінкін активно приєдналася до роботи саме у військовій медицині. І нині представник команди працює в медичному пункті військової частини А0853. Власне, не словом, а ділом наближаючи нашу бажану і таку очікувану перемогу. Дякуємо, хлопці. Thank you so much for your efforts. And something that I would not like to tell you today, but I have to. Unfortunately, we are having our last panel today. It's the sixth panel, which uh, will be uh, called Mental Health and Physical Rehabilitation. Of course, I wouldn't like to announce the final panel because I would like uh, this communication to last much longer. And we actually talked to the organizer uh, of uh, this event, we learned that the next summit will last at least 21 days. There is a smile and which uh, shows that we are on the right path. So, dear friends, uh, I will now invite the uh, panelists to the stage. Uh, the Unbroken Center for Treatment and Rehabilitation of uh, Ukrainians. Let me invite to this uh, stage uh, the uh, uh, manager of this project, Irina Zaslavets. Good morning, Irina. And we are giving you the floor. Would you like to use my microphone or would you like to use a headset? Well, anything you like. Yeah, it's quite good to use a microphone. Hello, I'm Irina Zaslavets. Yes, indeed, I am the uh, director of the uh, first uh, medical union of Lviv. I'm glad to work for probably the best healthcare facility in Ukraine because the thing that is uh, happening there in Lviv and the efforts we are making for the effort, uh, the, the efforts we are making for the healing of the patients, it's uh, a good reason for you to visit Lviv in case you haven't been there yet. Uh, a few words about our um, medical association and the Unbroken Center, which is a part of the big municipal hospital. Well, let us begin this way. Uh, I actually expected uh, my presentation to start a bit earlier. So my colleague has made uh, some amendments to the slides. A few words about Lviv, in case you have not been there yet. We are not too far from the Polish-Ukrainian border, and when the full-scale invasion started, many Ukrainians uh, fleeing from the uh, active uh, hostility zones uh, were traveling through. We were staying in Lviv, and you surely know the story of the uh, Stepanenka family, which uh, suffered uh, from the uh, period in Kramatorsk. Yana lost two legs, her mother lost one leg, and uh, uh, their uh, uh, well, her little brother was uh, taken care of both, and uh, 
yeah, the, the lives of uh, these people were saved and they uh, you know, were getting ready for uh, their prosthetics. Uh, so uh, that's uh, another boy which the global media was uh, writing about. Uh, that was a boy uh, who was in Vinitsa uh, in July last year during the airstrike, uh, which uh, uh, impacted the boy heavily. He had 45% of uh, his uh, skin impacted uh, uh, by the burns. Uh, fortunately, we managed to uh, stabilize uh, the condition of the boy. Later, he continued his uh, treatment abroad because, unfortunately, right now in Ukraine there are challenges. Uh, concerning treatment of uh, people with such levels of burns, but uh, fortunately our international colleagues supported uh, the, the boy with treatment. The boy has come back to Ukraine. He is eight years old right now. Last week he was taking part in a dancing competition and well, he's, he's great. He's still wearing mask, um, the face mask, which uh, uh, is uh, supporting uh, the uh, healing of his uh, scars. Uh, he is uh, uh, still awaiting some uh, other treatment, but uh, he is able to uh, uh, move and function, and uh, this is something we did together. This is uh, Roman, who lost half of his face and his limb. Our uh, surgeons uh, performed 69 uh, uh, different uh, interventions. Uh, he uh, has had some blood infusions. He has had some titanium prosthetics installed. This is a Roman colleague, a military brought to us uh, from the Yavarev uh, uh, training ground, which uh, was one of the 100 patients uh, delivered to us back then. He was in, uh, in quite a challenging condition. Uh, his uh, whole body uh, was uh, covered with uh, shrapnel and uh, there was a very low chance of his survival. He was brought into uh, the uh, uh, operating uh, theater uh, manually, but uh, well, for right now he has uh, good hopes of coming back uh, home. Uh, and he's a very important uh, patient for us because when he arrived with uh, another hundred of patients, we understood in our hospital that we had to develop uh, all of these uh, treatment uh, um, uh, interventions because we will have many more of such patients and we will have to treat such uh, patients in big numbers. And uh, since um, since then, we always uh, had uh, blood uh, available in our hospital, and uh, uh, we are able to uh, save many more patients thanks to having full blood. And we are glad that full blood is also available in many other hospitals throughout Ukraine. We were able to save lots of lives uh, throughout the course of this war. We uh, treated 15,000 patients, which includes military and civilians, adults and children. Each day we have evacuation trains arriving. And in the first uh, half a year, we had uh, lots of uh, ambulance uh, cars engaged in this. After that, the trains also joined the effort. So in total, uh, we have treated lots of people and we are also taking care of uh, uh, 150,000 displaced persons. Uh, they are not uh, wounded, most of them, fortunately, but uh, they have other health challenges. Many of them uh, also don't have any funds available for treatment, but we are doing our best to support them. And uh, yeah, people who have lost everything, they also uh, deserve to be uh, 
cared uh, in the best possible way. So we are doing our best to get international grants, international support from our partners to buy some more equipment, to get some more training, to uh, get uh, uh, some new uh, professionals uh, to join our team, for people not to think uh, about other centers where to seek care, uh, but instead to get everything in one place. And so the unbreakable the Unbroken Center, uh, quite often we are asked about what we are. Well, we are not a separate entity. We are, let's say, one of the units of a big municipal hospital. So we are uh, united by one topic. Our topic is war. So everyone who works for the hospital and is uh, engaged in providing care for people impacted by the war, uh, they are a member of uh, the Unbroken. So uh, here are the main areas we are working with. Uh, one of our leaders has uh, been uh, to Stanford, Stanford Hall. He was trained in physical rehabilitation and uh, psych psychological rehabilitation. He also understood that uh, surgery, orthopedics, uh, and reconstructive surgery to be more precise, burns, well, because uh, they are uh, also uh, a part uh, of uh, the blast trauma and also physical rehabilitation and the prosthetics. Well, all of this uh, should be included because uh, the uh, person um, does not have to think about uh, the uh, choice of the company or the center or they can get their prosthetics. We uh, want to ensure uh, that when we have such a patient, uh, when they are brought to us by the evacuation train, while the patient is uh, still in the ICU and we see that the patient needs amputation, we already start working on the identity team uh, of the uh, surgeon, uh, prosthetic specialist, uh, the psychologist, uh, and uh, rehabilitation specialists, uh, we are, are starting to think together how to make sure that uh, the future rehabilitation is successful and everyone uh, is uh, working together. Uh, the uh, famous nurse from Lysychansk uh, who uh, lost her legs, who got married and uh, yeah, she yep, is. Uh, she's currently in Germany, and uh, she got her prosthetics. We are still in touch with her, and uh, she wants to come back and have rehabilitation here in Ukraine. So uh, we are making every effort for Ukrainians to have no need to travel abroad because we are able to provide this care here in Ukraine. Uh, where Ukrainians uh, can get the care or uh, staying close to their family uh, without the need to speak another language, we can bring the best specialists to Ukraine and we mm, can make sure that uh, uh, the best equipment and the best specialists are available here in our hospital or elsewhere in Ukraine. And actually, any healthcare facility has to think about this to create the best conditions for Ukrainians here in Ukraine. And well, unfortunately, unfortunately, in these conditions, uh, we have to help lots of patients. But uh, at the same time, Ukraine is getting new opportunities for development, and uh, the whole world is uh, ready to help us. So let us use uh, these opportunities and let our healthcare facilities get this uh, uh, vast international experience available here. 
Here is a recent operation we did, operation on a teacher from Lysychansk who was uh, infected uh, uh, by, um, uh, uh, by a missile strike, and so she uh, has been through the operation through rehabilitation. And uh, this is uh, quite a striking story. This was a woman who was uh, hiding her face, but after the very first uh, session with the uh, therapist, uh, she shared that she had the feeling of uh, um, having uh, wings uh, behind her back. So it's it's very I important to have a surgery accompanied by uh, therapy because uh, all of this comes together and uh, yeah so the burns as I have mentioned and the orthopedics uh, and uh, the prosthetics actually the prosthetics workshop that uh, was uh, launched was just uh, oh one uh, uh, prosthetics uh, specialist we were supported uh, uh, um, by the uh, multi-service and we uh, have worked for a year already uh, providing these prosthetics to uh, um, Ukrainians uh, free of charge uh, with support of the donors. Also, we install uh, robotic um, bioprosthesis and we have already 12 uh, cases uh, of uh, such prosthetics installed. We only have a handful of specialists um, able to work with the upper limbs prosthetics of this kind. Our task right now is to train more people and we are working with uh, the uh, partners from uh, Germany and uh, the PUS and we have them visiting and uh, training. Um, uh, our uh, prosthetic specialists so that we have more of those able to install upper limbs prosthetics because we have thousands of such patients and unfortunately we currently have only about five people are ready to uh, do this job. So uh, I would like to show you a brief video if uh, this is possible of course. Can anyone support me with this? Uh, unfortunately, we cannot show you the video currently for technical reasons, but this is our military uh, Sergei. He lost a limb. He was uh, afraid to uh, share this news with his uh, girlfriend. He just, uh, he just decided to disappear from her life, but he found him in the uh, hospital and they got married and he was uh, wearing his uh, uh, wedding band on the uh, uh, left uh, hand, although normally Ukrainians uh, wear it on the uh, right hand finger. But uh, after he got his uh, prosthesis, uh, well, he was uh, finally able to uh, wear the uh, usual way. So, uh, prosthetics is a way for us to give a level of uh, slightly better comfort for the person and to give back some of the opportunities that were lost because of the war. Physical rehabilitation, I will, I will be very brief about this. We have people without uh, limbs here. We have some group trainings for them. Uh, they are working together and developing their skills. It's very important. Alek will share about uh, psychological rehabilitation. It's very important that we uh, have a psychiatric unit. And here in the pictures, you can see our mental health newly established center. And yeah, we are providing both inpatient and outpatient services. And it's very important for us uh, that uh, every person who uh, find themselves in our uh, center and does not have to think about uh, seeking for different uh, specialists in different places. No, all the specialists are available at one site and we are ready to 
provide uh, comprehensive care, and the military can fill this uh, care. And uh, this is what they are sharing with us. Uh, I have the feeling of being cared for. I am not sent to places. I'm staying here and getting all the care in it. And uh, we have launched a seven-store building for rehabilitation. Uh, we are actually building new floors and uh, that's because um, of the huge need uh, that uh, we see and we uh, envision providing care to 500,000 Ukrainians in total. We are implementing the best experience and the best technologies from around the world because we have to support so many Ukrainians. This is our rehabilitation center in Bruchovici. Uh, which uh, is very close to Lviv. Uh, we have some premises uh, there. We have got about half of the funds we uh, uh, need uh, for the renovation of the building. We are also uh, planning to build uh, uh, two new buildings for rehabilitation and trauma treatment. And any chance of us watching the videos? Any chance? Any? Any? Share the good news with us, please. Yeah, finally. Uh, the temperature is uh, 1300 degrees. It can uh, melt uh, steel and uh, concrete can be destroyed by explosions. If uh, the wind is uh, 28 meters per second, uh, they can break a tree. But uh, a human body is much more fragile. And despite of that, it has a spirit which uh, is unbreakable. And this is why we are unbroken. All the tragedies of this war have names. Uh, the railway station in Kramatorsk is connected with the family of Stepanenko. The destroyed Bakhmut, it is Mikita. In Sergeyevka, we have the brothers Volodymyr and Yakov. Uh, the uh, missile explosions uh, beside our hospitals, the first evac trains, uh, Doctors Without Borders, we still uh, remember all of that. Hundreds of healthcare professionals uh, that were wounded. We uh, were staying in the hospital all the time, living with our patients. Roman is one of those people. He had, was uh, there to uh, help him learn to walk again. Roman was the first patient, but right now we have thousands of them. They are unbroken. Oksana is a nurse from Lysychansk, and uh, these are her first steps. This is Mikhailo with his uh, bionic arm. These are Sergei and uh, Yulia, our <laughs> Roma and Julia. And our prosthetics workshop, which we are so proud about, it was uh, smaller in the beginning. It's much bigger, and it's me, by the way. And other doctors coming to us from around the globe to help us and to train us. And also we have the mental health center and also we have a premises for our unbroken mothers. And this is a place of dreams and hopes. And this is a place of uh, victory over the trauma. Someone was there at the Zmini island. Someone is uh, still wearing a face mask. Uh, someone uh, decided to get baptized in the hospital. Hundreds and thousands uh, of breathtaking stories. Every day we are there to gather, providing prosthetics, rehabilitation, operations and other interventions. We are looking for funds and we are dreaming together. This is our bridge to the new life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And finally, I'd like to add that the thing we are doing here in Lviv and uh, 
our experience and uh, bring in uh, the, the best uh, experience and equipment uh, to Ukraine. We are doing this not only for our patients, not only for Lviv. We want our experience to be beneficial for other regions and communities in Ukraine, making sure that every hospital can do what we are doing. And actually, it doesn't take much to do something like this. Uh, what it takes is to have this uh, desire and vision. And we are open to I share this experience with other hospitals and doctors to present other our processes and to explain how we work and how we deal with finances and uh, how we do operations. We are always uh, ready to help others and to support them in establishing uh, such centers in other regions. So when we are asked if we have plans of uh, being uh, scaled up to uh, be present in other regions and places, well, unfortunately, we already have uh, lots of work to do, but uh, uh, quite fortunately, we can uh, support other communities in other regions to do something similar in their place, copying the uh, unbroken uh, center in their places create such a system where there is a person in the center that unites all other specialists around uh, making the whole care process high quality, comfortable and uh, careful. The head of Unbroken Project, Irina Zaslavets, thank you so much. So are you going to leave? But maybe don't. Well, we will see. Maybe we will give the floor to the next speaker, but please pay attention, dear friends. This is not an exceptional day of our summit. If you have a question and you would like to ask something, and if you wish, please, you can ask your questions. I'm sure Ms. Irina will answer. Yes, most welcome. It's been amazing work, uh, but I have a very... Uh, important question. Uh, you know, I'm from America. I'm from California, a very uh, wealthy place. Uh, however, for us in California to pull off something like this is next to impossible. Uh, our system is, is completely broken, not, not to take a pun on words. Um, so I'm curious if you could comment on how you're funding this. Is it, is it a combination of private and government funds? And how does that how does that play out? And what is your what do your future plans look like in regards to where you need to source funds uh, for this kind of project? Because it's a a very large undertaking. So I just asked whether I understood you correctly. This is about the resources, the funds. Yes, thank you for your question. It's true. On one hand, we are lucky because we happen to find very good partners and friends everywhere since the very beginning of this big war when we came as a new team to a quite an old Ukrainian hospital uh, that was going to complete its work because it was devastated. We wanted just to show people that we believe in Ukrainian medicine. So we started to look for partners in among Ukrainian businesses, sponsors who started to invest money in uh, restoration of the premises, in purchasing equipment. And also we received some funds from the local Lviv budget. And our first dreams were really simple, just to renovate a room, to put a new bed in that room. That then the COVID has started. We were the main COVID hospital of the country. We had thousands, thousands of patients with COVID. And we also were uniting the local businesses. A lot of influential people, NGOs were united and approached in order to get ventilators, oxygen concentrators, beds, whatever. 
So we were showing with all our work that we are working, we provide the outcomes, the results, so the donors could come and see that, and they would say, yes, we see the results, so then we will donate, we will give money, we will invest. Also, our team shows results, and then people want to give money, and they see it's safe to give money, that these money are not going to be stolen, uh, not uh, spent for something else. They see how the money is spent quickly, efficient, efficiently. They can see the results. So in two or three months, a new department is open. So they just give us the equipment. We already start using it. Like, for example, we have the only one Da Vinci robot in our Ukrainian uh, state-owned hospital. And we communicate that to the whole of Ukraine. So we advertise, we promote, like, for example, this operation was done on this piece of so equipment provided by this kind of partner and thus businesses come and say we want to support you on and on and when the big war started and many people came to Lviv who require medical care we started to approach to all our partners that we already have an international organization who were coming to Lviv our mayor of our city Lviv mayor was uh, contacting us with them giving their contacts and now the city government government talks about our needs, we talk about their needs, there is communication, we communicate that to our patients, and they also communicate how important for them to get these conditions, so thus we are able to find partners all over Ukraine, all over the world, the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, Israel. Well, of course, it's difficult, uh, but to name some countries who are not helping uh, us, except maybe Russia, of course, that we wouldn't have any uh, cooperation. We are helped with Red Cross, for example, and they helped us with the Brihovich Rehabilitation Center. Canadian Red Cross is paying, helping to pay uh, the work of our psychotherapist, and thus Oleg is able to find and train people because it's not you know, three dollars, but they, they are given good salary. So the partners are interested in having such cooperation as they see the result, they see the outcome. They don't doubt uh, our transparency and the efficacy of our work. Of course, on top of that, we provide a lot of services within the state-owned health care. So we work with the National Health Service of Ukraine. They pay for the treatment of our patients as well. We also develop transplant program and our team is headed by 29-year-old guy and he's transplanting a lot of organs. One-fifth of all transplanted organs are transplanted in our center. And the, the state pays for that very well as well. So we develop our co cooperation with the state, our city, municipal, uh, uh, government helps us and also lots of fundraising. We show videos like I showed to you. We show that to our partners and uh, this is also fundraising. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Irina. Basically, of course, uh, maybe if there are more questions and short answers, if not, then a round of applause to Irina Zaslavets, please. Thank you again. Thank you, Ms. Irina.